the bottom of there we go yep well hi everybody thank you for joining us today um we're going to talk about uh google tools and we have jc palmer here to help with that and also some um reminders and tips for professionalism um it's a lucky day when we get to see those awesome pairs of esu8 so thanks for tuning in even if you can't be here live um, oh gosh, I put the pictures right over my own. So I am Steph Lundgren I'm here at ESU8, part of the PD uh, team. And here's my email. As always, if you ever need anything during the year, you can reach out and I'm here for you. Um, I just love every day I get to work with the Paras. You guys do such an important job in our schools. So um. We have Christy on with us and Christy, you can kind of think about how you feel today. JC and I, maybe you'll think too, how do we feel today? Uh, remember, this is a good um, thing to do with your students too. Um, I guess that um, the bottom three don't exactly have names. So you could name your own feeling there. Uh, okay. I lost you girls. Okay. Oh, uh-huh. Uh oh, are you back? Are you back, Christy? I guess these are over and over. They're happy, sad, and mad. Um, you could it, say it, it disappeared. Oh, oh no, we have some others. We have silly no, and I mean, like that. I, I lost the. I can hear you talking to me, but I lost the pictures and everything. Hmm. I had, all of a can you my find the icon that stands for Zoom on your computer? It's a it's a blue box that has a little white camera in it. It just went white for me. I can hear them. Let's try this. Okay, JC, how are you feeling today? Oh, what you, can uh, you feel yes. your emotion? Thanks for having me. Yes, I'm definitely one of the happy boxes. So maybe the five or the nine there. Okay. I'm excited to be be on this zoom with everyone if you are having tech trouble hopefully you can pull it back if you pull zoom back up um there's a speaker view or gallery view that might be the issue but okay i'm back on okay great and i see and everything's back to the way it was well christy how are you feeling today what what would your pump pumpkin face look like I'm not mad and I'm not sad. I'm not silly. Well, I'd say somewhere between happy and a rush day. <laughs> oh, a rush day. Are most of your days like that? Yeah, things are just kind of, you know, just kind of a little hectic today. But on the general, I'd say I'd, I'd have probably a, oh, I'd go with the number one. All right. I think I'm pretty happy today too. Um, I have finally found my office after two weeks away. And so um, just to be here in my office for a day and getting caught up feels good. But also, like I said, um, I don't mean to gush, but I do love my para days and being with you Paris makes me happy. So, all right, so let's get into it. Here is JC's picture and she'll tell you a little bit about herself. Yes, well, hi again, and thank you, Steph, for having me be part of this um, special para day. I enjoyed getting to know some of you this summer and look forward to sharing some tech tips here. Um, I, yeah, if we want to jump right into it, I'll share my screen and that way I can, um, oh, it says host is- You know what? I'm going to do that for you just right now. I'm going to make you a co-host, so. Thanks. Sorry about that. That's all right. While she's pulling that up, I could share. This is my second year as an instructional tech facilitator for ESU8. So I get to bop around to several schools and help um, teachers and parents admin with the different tech tools that we use in the classroom. So if you happen to see me in your building in the future, feel free to stop me and um, we can talk through tech things um, if I'm there in person at your school in the future. Okay. So, okay, Steph, am I now? Yep, I think so. Or do I have to stop? It says this will stop other screen sharing. Yep. You want to continue? Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. And sharing. Okay. Are you all seeing my screen now? Yep. Perfect. Okay. 
So let's get um, jumped right into, there's lots of different pieces of educational technology that we use or could use, um, but in particular today, we want to um, hone in on some of the Google tools that a lot of schools use because of the way that the IT has set up um, the ability for teachers and students to work. They can then use um, Google to create things, um, to keep themselves organized, uh, to engage their students and to continue learning. So we'll um, highlight a few things specifically within Google. And I like to use this shoe analogy. So there's lots of different shoes, but we're gonna, um, just like today you have on a pair of shoes that were perfect for today. Maybe it was rainy or went with your outfit or just happened to be the pair that you wanted to wear today. Um, that's kind of like these educational technology tools. There might be um, something that's useful and the one you want to use right away and implement and try out with students or yourself. And then there might be another pair, another idea um, that is valuable or down the road or another day. So let's keep that in mind that not all of these are going to be something that you'll try immediately maybe, but they could be um, helpful down the road. So we, um, when we look at Google and Google options, there's a lot of different options out there, but specifically we'll talk a little bit about Google Drive and then get into like these four main creation options that come with that, docs, sheets, slides, and forms, and then also um, get into calendar and a couple other Google related tips. So starting, and I'm going to jump um, back and forth between this presentation and my actual um, computer showing you it in motion. So we'll go back and forth, but to start Google Drive, um, if if we're new to Google or new to thinking about the big picture, Google Drive is really just like the hub where everything lives. So it can be where you start making documents. So I'm gonna come over here and just show an example where on, when you're on your drive, um, when we are in, I'm gonna to go to a folder here where I've got Kira's. So when you are in Google Drive up at the top left-hand corner under new, there is the option then to create these types of things. So you can think of Google Drive as a spot. And hello, we have a few more joining. Um, the spot where everything's going to live or so you can go there and create from there or if you have other resources and you want to put them there as the housed spot for your documents and information, then that is your beginning point is understanding what your Google Drive is. Now, Google Drive is also like a cloud. It's a cloud version. So anything that we save in Google Drive is going to be there, whether your computer gets ran over by a truck or um, you drop your phone in the mud. Um, those things that were on Google Drive are still going to be there when you log into your Google account on a different device. So that's kind of the benefit of using Google versus some of the older ways that um, tech has been operated. So I really love it for me. So if I'm home doing something on one device, I can get to school and it's on that, on my new device too, on my other device. So nice. Can't ever forget anything, right? Yes. <laughs> That's a great point. Yep. Right. It's always um, right across platforms and Google drive will work with any type of device. So whether you're using Chromebooks or an Apple laptop or a Dell laptop or a cell phone, different types of phone, all, it's across the board. So, um, okay. So, so it's then also a good one for us to talk to Paris about because all of you use different devices in your school. So, yes, yes. There's, um, I think it's a school within Google, okay. within our ESU 8 area that doesn't really operate out of Google Drive. Um, I was actually just talking to some people about that this morning, but I think for the for the mass general crowd of ESU 8 area, everybody and most edu schools for education use this Google Drive. So you might have your announcements coming through here, or you might be helping students get their files organized, or you might have the opportunity to type a paper or something and you would go to Google Drive to do so. So Google Drive's kind of like your file cabinet, right? Yeah, that's a good analogy. Yep. Yes. Instead of having a file cabinet with all your papers stacked into it, um, you know, have a Google Drive where all your documents live. 
and you okay. can create new ones too. Uh, yes, yes. So to get yourself organized when you are in your drive and you create a new doc, which we'll get into some document specific tips here, but the the thing that can be overlooked easily is naming the document. So it's just best practice for students or ourselves to name the document as soon as you come into the file so that otherwise they're all just going to be called untitled document and then it's hard to find your future resources. So if I was going to name this um, report for reading class or whatever whatever you're um, working on, then if you type start typing here or if this is going to be my... Um, uh, letter to parents or whoever you're making something for, maybe you're typing up something that says your teacher. Um, you can click that box and it will automatically put the title in there with what those first few words of your um, document were. And then uh, this yeah. now is the name of the document over here. So we have letter to parents. You can see that goes across. So best practice to keep your Google Drive organized is to make sure you're naming your files right when you come into them. That para training. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I went ahead and uh, muted someone. So thank you for joining. But if you would like to, I'm guessing you didn't realize you were um, on speaker. So you're welcome to unmute if you have questions. Uh, okay. So then when you're in your drive, um, the, other than naming the files as you create them as a the best practice to keep yourself organized, um, you can also create folders. So I might go in here and click um, new and then new folder. And perhaps I want to name this um, para October 4th, 2022. So then all of the information or resources, things that I'm building and showing today, maybe I'm gonna drop all of these files into that folder. So you can have folders within folders and you can color code them. So I have my drive with three main folders and then within those folders, lots of other subfolders that you can then drill down even further. So uh, utilizing folders and here's a screenshot on this slideshow that kind of shows some other options. You can color code the folders, um, which is helpful for students. So you um, click control and click on the folder and then you can um, play with those options. You could also add emojis or um, like the little pictures ahead of it to give a visual rep representation in there as well. It's kind of like in your file folders in your filing cabinet as Steph was describing. Um, this is just your manner of getting yourself situated so that you can find your resources. Okay, um, the other note that I had on here to remind everyone about Google Drive especially if we're new to working with Google coming from other platforms. Um, Google lets us collaborate very easily. So we can um, share a folder and that would be like um, multiple people having access to the same filing cabinet from anywhere they're at. So we can all have access to that file. And that's different than um, having to email files back and forth. It's just automatically collaborative. So if so I want- The cool thing is I can be on a document with JC at the same exact time. And we can be typing our ideas into it um, and at the same time without having to file or um, save and then send a file to her. Yes, <clears throat> perfect. And to, um, to show you an example of that, I will just share this example doc here. So I clicked share in the top right. And then if I, this is one method of how it could be shared. You can use email addresses. Um, you could also just share the link. Um, so there's lots of different ways to share, but for right now, I'll just um, do it via email. So I typed in Steph's email and clicked send. So that's sending her an email. And then if, when she goes into her drive or accesses it, then she should be able to open this and say hello. So I will say something and she can come in here and type at the same time. Go ahead. Um, hey, JC, would you go up to share one more time just to show them the editor part? Yes. Thank you. And I, ha I had this marked for later. I'm kind of getting ahead of Oh, myself. I'm sorry. So, no, I'm glad you mentioned that because, yes, appropriate time to explain it. So once we have um, shared it, then there's three main options that you will typically see, which are going to be viewer, 
uh, commenter or editor. So if I want her to be able to come in here and type and erase and delete and add and fully collaborate with me, we'd want her as an editor. Um, or I could just mark her as a viewer. So perhaps I have um, something all organized and ready, but I just want her to be able to see it, but not be able to tweak it. Then I could change that to viewer. And when she opens that link that I sent her via the email, she would be have full access to look at it, but not be able to edit it. So, so I'm kind of trying to think about a time that parents work with kids that that might be appropriate. So uh, maybe you're sending a letter out to parents, right? Something like that, or I don't know, um, or to other teachers, then you don't want them to edit it. You just want them to see it. So then they're just a viewer or like maybe, maybe. it's assignment details for a kid and they just need to see the assignment, but not change anything on that page. Um, yeah. yeah. Like a set of directions or some mm -hmm. review information, you don't need them to add to it or change it. Just yeah. It. Yeah. Perfect. So then they could just be a viewer. You, um, depending on your school and how think like the workflow that your the teachers that you work with use um they might be using a platform like Google Classroom or Canvas or something where they're sharing links and um that's like another layer of understanding with what all the Google Docs can do but just know that there's lots of options on how you want to share those so cool okay so let's look and explore a little bit further into Google Docs. So I would mention that if you have previously been a fan of like using Microsoft based things, or just if you use an Apple computer and or an iPad and have all the Apple things, I just wanted to explain. So Google Docs is very similar to Google or to Microsoft Word, and it would be similar to Pages on an Apple device. So Google Sheets is the comparative to Excel and Google Slides is going to be like um, a PowerPoint. So those are the words for Microsoft PowerPoint, but Google Slides is very similar. So schools are generally operating out of this Google world, but if you haven't seen that before, then now you see the correlation. Um, or Keynote is another one that's on um, Apple devices instead of Slides. So looking then at Google Docs, um, I want to show these features other than just the basic word processing. We'll look at some checkboxes, um, emojis, um, how you can type with your voice and how to do hyperlinks. So I'm going to come over here to this Google Doc example. And what I mean by interactive checkboxes, instead of just bullet points, bullet points can be handy for certain things as well. But perhaps you're helping a student create a list of the homework they need to do, or you're making reminders for yourself, or just developing a working document where you want to be able to see a visual checkoff. If you insert these um, checklists, there it's the little checkbox instead of the bullet points. Then when you click on the um, checkbox, it will actually let you it as you can see, it's crossing them off as you go um, versus. Like if you make them a bullet point, you couldn't do that. So that's kind of a newer feature of Google Docs, which is kind of handy to insert checkboxes. So to do that, if you're just typing away, it's just insert and um, insert and, ch and checkboxes. If I can't talk and think at the same time. So if somebody else sees where um, tools insert. Fun if I can't show you what I just did a few minutes ago. <laughs> Sorry about that. And the thing about Google is oftentimes they switch things up on you. So you have to be ready for that. Yeah. <laughs> you might have to look in a different place a different day. Yes, that is true. Things do get shifted around. I just double checked myself on this just before we started here to make sure I could accurately portray it. I thought, I guess I thought it was up here as well, but maybe it's just over here in the toolbar. Um, so. Did you have to have your cursor somewhere? I don't know if your cursor was. Well, I mean, there's always this okay. box up here, so you can always just, I, I was thinking there was two okay. spots. That's right. So, okay. The other one is emoji reaction. So there's two different things about emojis. One is right here where you can just go in and click and add, like, as if you're typing, like just putting it on the paper. So adding um, visual things, but now there's actually reactions to the document. So when you hover over the document over here on the right-hand side, 
you can add a reaction to a specific thing and it bumps it out over to the side so people can react to certain parts of the document and give feedback in that way. So it's a quick way. Maybe you just are checking in on students' progress and you don't necessarily want to leave them a comment or lots of elaborate feedback, but you can go in and give them a thumbs up or a happy mm. smiley face or something uh, like the cheering emoji, something that would celebrate. Here's the clapping hands, it would celebrate the work that they've done so far. Awesome. And kids could even do that with each other if they were editing each other's work or wanted to share each other's work and get some feedback of um, how effective it is. So, yes, yes, cool. Okay, um, voice typing, I think we talked about that this summer as well, but I'll just show you that one again. So this is under tools and voice typing and the microphone pops up on the right. And when you click on it, then the microphone is engaged and it will listen and convert your words to text, period. You'll need to add punctuation, but this is a pretty quick way to get words on paper, period. And unclick the microphone and it's not perfect, but it does put words on the, to the document if you will need to help students. Um, and this is handy since you can you can pull up this Google Doc on your phone and talk into your phone and it's going to quote, quote, type your paper. Um, so kind of a modification that would be valuable for more of a verbal learner. Okay, and then lastly, hyperlinks. Sometimes we see these um, hyperlinks in agendas or shared resources and just understanding the hyperlink concept is sometimes valuable. So a hyperlink is just going to be, it's typically going to be in blue and it's going to bounce you out to somewhere else, link to another resource. So for example, um, cat video, let's just say we want everybody to watch this cat video that we're going to pull up on YouTube, YouTube cat video. <laughs> Um, You're going to get thousands of, of thousands of them. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to go with whatever this first one is. I hadn't <laughs> previewed to find a great cat video. Steph would be the animal expert here. <laughs> but, you we've got it? a grammar really add here, but so then um, this link up at the top. So where it says YouTube, this is your URL. So I'm going to copy that. So the command C or edit copy. Okay. That link then. If I didn't want to have to go Google up that that video, I just want a link on this document and so they can just click it and it'll go right to where I want them to go. Highlight that and click your hyperlink button and paste where you want them to go, which was that video. I just copied it, paste it, apply it. And so now that that those words are hyperlinked. So instead of it just saying cat video now. You can see it turned blue and it's got an underline. So now when I click that, it will jump to a new tab and take me out to the spot. So hyperlinks so you are- you have to click on the video then. Once you true. click on cat video, then you have to click the link. True, yes, yes. You hover on the word or click it and then uh -huh. click it again. Yes, you're right, it is two clicks. But sometimes um, that's useful or you'll see that a lot with, um, if, if you have a presentation and then you link to another spot within the presentation or another. So knowing that you can create your own hyperlinks pretty easily just with this hyperlink button is like, and this is the same link to look for like in emails or across all of Google, like Gmail and all the Google platforms, hyperlinks are an option to create. As I go through, if there's questions, feel free to jump in with questions. We'll save some time at the end for general questions too, but I'm open to just unmute and, or pop in or put them in the chat if you would like. Okay, we're gonna look at Google Sheets briefly. So Google Sheets is kind of like Excel and here's an example. So when you open up Google Sheets, there's a brand new one. There are lots of things you can do with Google Sheets, but um, for example, you can add the formulas like in Excel where you would be adding together things, you know, like, okay, so you have three and two. I'm going to do extremely basic math here. And then the sum of these, it you can add them together and it will automatically tally. Okay, so that is um, obviously very simplified, but to explain that Excel has that capability with the formulas so does Sheets. 
Okay. So you might be in charge of like organizing some supplies or um, counting up how many kids are going to go on the field trip or something like that. And I do the cheat um, over um, the, the furthest right tool. Oh, that's probably a Greek letter that I just don't know what it is. Okay. okay. Anyway, I just go under some there once I highlight okay. things and I put it there. Nice. Yes. So, I was just talking to someone. Go ahead. About I how love seeing that JC, you just typed it in because I always do it the hard way by having <laughs> to go up and find that. So, well, no, that's good to know both ways. There's a ton of um, formulas that are available. As you can see here, I don't know what all of these mean or what they do. You can Google what they mean if you get into being a spreadsheet pro or nerd like me. I like all this stuff, but I don't know all of the different ones. So that is um, a good example of like database keeping though. You can also add checklists here. So if you have a list of student names or something and you just need to check them off, this has um, check boxes as well as, uh, if I can find them again, <laughs> tools. Where's my check box? I just had them earlier. There it is. Okay, yes, insert and check box. So then you can interact with these as well. So if you have a list of names um, and you just need to daily check them off for whatever category you're doing it for. I know some people use this for lunch counts. So they're just gonna put in Monday and they go through and check which students they have. So this is one way to manipulate Google Sheets. You can also have kind of a fun one that is kind of overlooked looked and is pretty simple is to just format the colors. So format and alternate the colors. So you can pick for it to do like A1 through Z100. That's basically a huge range of cells then, and you want it to be pink um, and apply it. Oops, okay, I'm gonna go up here. Apply to all areas, done, nope. I tried this earlier. It's a quicker way to alternate all of your options. I just did it. I use this one often. 25. You're saying all these cells want, there we go. I don't know, just took a second. So you're saying all of the cells and then it automatically will alternate colors. So you can just tell it's easier to read or if you're wanting to help make lists, um, it's just a quick way to differentiate those lines. Okay. So I'd love to go into further Google Sheets, but I know that Excel and Sheets are, depending on your role and what line of work you're helping with, um, may or may not be used a ton. So we're gonna go into Google Slides. And this is like your PowerPoint or your keynote. This is a lot of times presentations. This is a lot of times where teachers might be developing the lessons that they are then showing students. So if you have the opportunity to reteach, they might be sending you Google Slides. Um, or if you have the chance to make Google Slides to reteach something, here's two little uh, tidbits within Google Slides. So when you want to put in a video, like here we have another cat video. So I will show you the steps for that and the value of um, embedding it instead of going out to it. So if you search a video, and we let's do dogs this time. We search a dog video and select it and insert it. The formatting options come up on the right hand side. And this is a 10 minute video, but let's say I just want students to see like 30 seconds of it because that was like the meat and potatoes or the main message or the cool part of the video. You can have it set to automatically start at um, minute five and a half and only play until minute 602. That way, um, when they then get to this slide and you click play on it, it automatically, you see that jumped to minute five minute and 30 seconds. So kind of a quicker way to show videos without having to watch the whole video and without having to fumble through it. <clears throat> um, Google, um, slideshow templates are sometimes a lifesaver if you're building slideshows. So slidesmania.com is one option to find free templates. So these are just resources that are already made. I um, mean, come in and um, 
we'll just scroll through some of these top ones here. So let's say you like this slide show slide show template. When you click on that to pre well, not the ad, it's going to let you look and see like what some of the slides will look like. And if you would like to then um, add it, you just say open in Google Slides and it will make you a, a copy of this entire template. So click use template up in the top right corner and all of these slides then that are all pretty and have graphics and matching fonts and all the things are now part of your Google Drive. And from there, you can just go in and edit the words to say what you want it to say. So um, if you're creating a lot on Google Slides, the these two that I've linked in here, um, Slides Carnival is another one. These are some resources that are just pre-made templates because the, the templates or backgrounds, the themes that are already available in Google Slides are kind of limited. So if you want to go into finding some other ones, there's um, like holiday themed ones and whatnot as well. So and today we're using one that was created on Slides Carnival. So awesome. Okay, cool. Yeah. This like with the orange and the uh -huh. we practice what the, we preach. Yep. No need to worry about all that mm. background things when we can just go in and borrow a pre-made one. Okay, Google Forms. We could spend a lot of time learning just about Google Forms, but high fly overview of Google Forms is that it's a way to collect information. Um, so instead of having them write their name on a piece of paper or instead of having them email in responses, or if you're trying to gather data from lots of different people for any sort of um, purpose, Google Forms can be the way to do that. You could also create um, quizzes or help teachers digitalize a quiz so that they can students receive instant feedback and it can speed up grading um, that process. So just like we were talking about in Google Forms or in Google Drive earlier, this is one of the options to create a new Google Form. So then I've come out here to Google Forms and when you're in editing mode, this is kind of what it looks like. You could come in here and um, create questions. So when it's blank, you just go click the top right-hand corner to add a new question. So this might be question four on this example. And I'm gonna give the options of A, B, C, and D. Oops, okay. And I've already, um, prior to us Zooming, I built a couple examples um, on here. So I have, three questions that I didn't name correctly. Oh, there we go. Number three. Okay, so Google Forms, you name it. This is an example. You add the questions. There are a ton of question options. <clears throat> I've just got multiple choice ones showing here, for example, right now, but you can create a variety of different types of ways to gather information. When you click on the little eyeball in the top right-hand corner, that will take you over to preview what it looks like as far as like what you would send out to um, members of the sports team, members of the class, to the parents, to whoever you're helping gather information from, you'd send them this link and this is what it would look like on their end. If you were going to digitalize a quiz, they, there's 10 questions, multiple choice, um, just make pretty simple um, back end form and under settings, you just change this toggle to called make a quiz. And when you change that toggle to on to make a quiz, then that lets you go back to the questions and apply how many points is each question worth and what is the correct answer. So you, you signify which ones are the correct answer, how many points they're worth. And then uh, to show you an example, if I go through and fill out this as a student, so now I'm looking at it from a student side. After I click submit, it lets me see right instantly how I did on that quiz. So on this example, looks like I missed all of them, um, but I can, <laughs> I thought I had it set up where, there we go. Here's another example I did earlier where some of them are gonna be correct and some are incorrect, but it, you can also elaborate and tell why is that correct? Or if I selected A and it was supposed to be C, it could pop up a little message there and gives me more information. So this is just, if paras wanna take a written test of a 
teachers and say, hey, let's make it digital and I'll help you. It'll help them grade and get their responses really quickly. This is um, possible through Google Forms. And I'd love to help further if you want to dive into that further because Google Forms is pretty handy. Um, okay, Google Calendar. This is a um, pretty well used option, but there's some little tweaks within Google Calendar that are time savers. So I'm going to jump into Google Calendar. And if this is October, we might want to set up a reoccurring event, meaning if you know every week a certain thing happens, like trash day or payday or library day, you can, oops, you can have it um, organized. So those events will automatically pop up and you don't have to go in and type it. You don't have to write, handwrite it in your planner every single day that it, things happen. So click on it, create an event. So maybe what Steph might know, a reoccurring event for pairs might be the, or a staff Para training. Pair training. Well, there you go. Okay. If it, I don't know if pair training will occur on the same time every week, but we're going to click this or every month, but on this um, does not repeat button. We click that and we're going to say it repeats um, maybe weekly on Monthly Wednesday. on the first or something. Month, but actually, yeah, it's every other month, but we'll just use it as an example. Example, yes, perfect. So if you have something that's on a designated day, you can customize and go a little further, but for the sake of a quick example, let's say you had power training monthly on the first Wednesday. Once I click save, then See, when I scroll now into November, there it is on the first Wednesday, December, first Wednesday, it's automatically going to put that in and therefore saves you time entering or typing or, um, and you can always go in and delete or remove that. But the repeating events is pretty handy. Also, I would point out on this is that you can have multiple calendars for yourself. So you might have one calendar that's all the, like the family member stuff. You might make another calendar for yourself that's all of your appointments or your deadlines or reminders. Or you could help students make a um, calendar per class period if they are seeing a lot of due dates for for math or something. They could make a math calendar and then put all their deadlines for big projects on their calendar, for example. Sometimes their learning management platforms will already have calendar features built in, but just understanding the repeating event concept is kind of handy for um, using Google Calendar for all that it's worth besides just a digital planner, like make it work for you, save you time. Um, oh, and sharing calendars. So I think Steph alluded to this this summer when we were talking about this, but if I have a family member calendar and I want everybody in the family or whoever, maybe you and a student or all the paras need to be on the same calendar. So one person puts it in and then everybody gets to see that information. Um, you can, oops, you can edit the um, access to the calendar. So I click the three dots and go into settings and down here, I can add people to this calendar. So they might not be able to see all of my calendars, but this particular calendar I want to share with everybody. So anything I put on that one um, is available. So that I would just add their names and share it just like you do with a Google Doc. And do you want to show them how to change the color right there too? Sure. If you go to those three dots, when you hover over one of the calendars, you can change a color too. Yes, per who, yeah, what that, if you're. I mean, trash day should be green like Oscar the Grouch, right? Okay, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you could see, you could see everybody like associates different colors with different things. And so, yes, you might want to put the color that's most appropriate for you and for that type of event. So, um, okay. You can, when you create events too, you can also change the color right there. It doesn't change it for the entire calendar, but that's sometimes helpful if you want just a certain one to be different. So, okay, let's go back to our Google slide where we were talking about all of the tips here. Um, Oh, well, on Google Calendar, just know that if you do, if you're a Google user too, you can um, 
subscribe to your school's calendar so that you can get those events on your phone. And then it's just a checkbox to uncheck or check and see what's on the school calendar too. Okay, Google Chrome. Um, these tips are just real quick, but up at the top, let's um, say you are a person that opens a ton of tabs and or needs to help students organize all the different things that they have open throughout the day. I would recommend that they consider um, the tabs as more short-term, quicker ways to organize themselves and then turning on the bookmark tab bar so that they can um, reference the bookmarks. So the bookmark bar is your three dots if, if you're on Google Chrome um, and bookmarks and show bookmark bar. And if you don't have that checked, then see that little bar up across the top of my screen went away. So now I'm gonna go back and turn that on. And just by um, having that bookmark bar on, then um, when you bookmark something, it can be really easy and a one click to get to your resources. So if you know you need to access your weekly announcements that an administrator sends every week, um, or it's always in the same document, just bookmark that. And you can always just click that bookmark then. Um, I'll show you the tab organization across the top. If you hover over it and click control and add to new group, excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. I hope I don't sneeze. Okay. Um, yeah, excuse me. There's different colors and then you can name them. So this is going to be para, para info, info. You can drag and drop the tab into that into that tab group. So then you can just condense them. And so I want to go about my day, but later I want to come back to this para info. I can just expand those tabs, but they don't have to take up all the room across the top. So JC, I had no idea. I'm learning things too. Oh yeah. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> yes. The there's options to um, use multiple ones too. So you can have several, like where'd my screenshot go here? Um, yes. This is a screenshot of tabs. So you might have all, like if you have to open a bunch of reading tabs or all the tabs for when you go into the fourth grade room or all the things you wanna leave open and read later tonight, you can make several different tabs like, the, like this colored thing shows and then just expand them when you use them. The thing about tabs, why I say it's short-term organization is because once you close these tabs, then it, it will, it'll just delete the tab color thing. So bookmarks are more long-term if you want it to always, always be there. Okay, a couple engagement ideas with Google. So these are options that are digital ways to pull in some quick tech, um, something quick and engaging that um, if you don't have a physical thing or wanna just try something different. So write on Google. So when you go to google.com, or if you're just on a, your home screen of your Chrome browser. Um, if you type in flip a coin, there is a flip a coin option built right there. You don't have to go to a, a different website or anything. It's just heads or tails built right in there. Now, there's something to be said about students literally learning to flip a coin and all that. So I definitely understand, but sometimes we just want a quick way to do something and you don't have a coin or whatnot, then this is an or option. Timer. A timer could be right there too. Yes. Dice. Yeah. Yep. Yes, roll a dice. Um, you can manipulate the dice here a little bit more and there's a few options here, but um, what did you just say, Steph? What was the one you were thinking? Oh, uh, timer. timer. Yes, so a three minute timer, for example. You've got three minutes. It will um, pull up some videos, but sometimes it'll just pull up right on. Okay, I think it's, very short videos will just uh -huh. timers will pull right up here and it'll it starts automatically so these are um oh the random number as i was doing i'm going to go back and to, that's what i used at the para training this summer i used the random number generator to get um our number for our prizes that we gave out perfect that is fun there's Okay, I didn't, there's a fidget spinner. Some of these are new even since the last time I looked at that. So there's like Wheel of Names is another site that um, I'll let you put in the names of students to draw from as well. Uh, okay, and Google Translate, if you're working with someone that you need to um, 
translate translate to this is just an fyi that is totally free and totally right on the top of google so you just type in google translate and you're going you can even say it so there's got the microphone here um but where where is the bathroom and then you want that to convert to let's pick a language like spanish Okay, here is our answer, and you can read it. You could copy paste it, or you can listen. ¿Dónde to it. está el baño? So then um, it helps literally on the spot if you're in person with someone and needing to translate something quickly. Um, I don't know that it's perfect. I don't have a Spanish or any foreign language degree or anything, but if in a pinch, this is a quick way to go back and forth. And if they want to say something to you in their language, and uh, just click the microphone, let them say it, and then have it convert to English um, so that you can kind of use that as a quick way to, to communicate. Okay. We would be curious to hear a takeaway or maybe Steph could share it. I don't know who's all live or still live with us, uh -huh. but, um, and if you're watching this later, we appreciate that you went through it. I would maybe encourage you to take a moment to turn to someone near you if you're watching this with someone later and think through how might you use Google, one of these options, um, to be more effective or efficient with your line of work? Yeah, so Christy or Jennifer, do you want to share out anything that you think you might be able to use from Google with your kids? I really don't know right offhand, but I do like the fact that you are taping this, correct? Yes. Because some of that stuff I need to read over one more time. So I can understand it better, but absolutely. Or you call us and we'll help you go through it again in your individual context, right? So we could zoom with you. Bless you, JC. Um, we could zoom with you and um, help walk you through something that's really applicable, you know, to your work at that yeah. time that you need it. So. Yes. Thanks. And yes, I muted there for a second because I was sneezing, but I, um, <laughs> I realized that sometimes it's more useful to hear some of this while you're in front of your device, trying something or wanting to do with something specific. Mm -hmm. So that's where I said yeah. at the beginning, if you see me out and about, I'm happy to help when I'm there. In yeah. person. But, Jennifer, do you have anything that you might be able to use? Um, I mean, we use a lot of like the timers and stuff. I'm a preschool para right now. Oh, sure but I'm actually working on my teaching degree right now. So a lot of it Great. can be used in the future when I have my own classroom too. Absolutely. That's awesome. You're thinking ahead and I'm going into it. Cool. For anyone curious to learn more about any digital skills um, within the Google world, it's called Applied Digital Skills. And I mentioned it this summer, but there are a ton of opportunities for free out there to teach ourselves um, at the pace that's appropriate at the time that we prefer, um, depending on your goals. So for example, I'll just show you this one in particular. If you have Google Drive and it's out of control and you can't find your files and there's things everywhere and you wouldn't mind putting some organization to it, for example, here is a little mini lesson that um, is just how to organize your files. And when you click start, um, it kind of shows you over on the right-hand side here. It will go through um, directions with a written description and videos, and that would give you time to pause. And you can work through this little lesson that has like a little four minute videos to show that. So this is just a lesson on organizing your files, but there's a ton of other um, applied digital skills out there. So depending on where you're wanting to learn, these are some of your options. Like we've just talked about Google Docs and Drive and Forms. Maybe you want to um, learn more about using Gmail effectively. You can go in and click and specifically um, go work through a lesson about Gmail or more so maybe it's a topic that you're wanting to learn about, not necessarily just the tool, but the general topic. So um, depending on what you're teaching or helping with the like here's career and college readiness. So how about you would want to help students create a resume? So how might that look? What could we do to do that, um, to create a resume? This little 45 minute lesson can walk you through some tips on that. So, so I would um, highly recommend checking out Google 
um, applied digital skills because of the free learning that can occur for any age. And if if it's not for us, it might be something we pass along to students to work through um, as well. So, okay. I appreciate the opportunity to share some Google things. There's a lot, like I, I'm gonna go back up here. There's, there's a lot of different things, um, not just in Google, but just in ed tech in general that can help us just to create and organize and you know engage students and, and learn better. So I appreciate you looking for something that would work for you now or maybe in the future. And would be curious if you have questions um, otherwise. I look forward to hopefully seeing more of you in person in the future. Okay. Well, you gave me a lot of things to think about. <laughs> well, so, thanks. I mean, us. that's good because I, you know, I want to learn these new things also. So, um, thank you. Yes. Well, thank you for taking time to be on. Oops. I have a couple more slides that we'll talk through here. Um, course. Oh, there we go. Um, thank you, JC, so much for joining us. I think it's um, technology is one of those areas where we always have something to learn. And so it's very exciting. Let's see here. I'm going to click through. It's not letting me escape out of there where I can get down to my portion here. So we just want to um, highlight some para skills each time that we meet this year. And um, so um, we'll talk about professionalism a little bit and remembering just some of those things that um, we talk about a lot in the summer, but maybe we can um, bring to light here too. So um, one is to be a positive role model, right? Um, always exhibiting the behavior that we want to see from kids. Um, if we don't want them on phones, we shouldn't be on our phones. If we don't want them talking um, in a negative way, we shouldn't either. So the more that we can be that positive role model, the better. Um, also, we want to remember to protect student confidentiality. That can be kind of a... Um, a hard thing sometimes in our small towns, especially when we know everyone, but um, that's why it's even more important um, that we don't share any student information once we're out of school. Um, that's everything, um, whether um, a student got in trouble at school or maybe a student in a class um, found some lice and was treated for lice or something like that. We wouldn't want to share that. Um, we never want to share things about IEPs. Um, and we always want to refer people back to the principal and teachers if um, they have questions. Um, also, follow dress code. Um, I know at our workplace, there's no rips or tears in our jeans when we wear them on Friday. I never want to be at risk of losing my jeans Friday because I love that so much. Um, but, you know, really thinking about um, this summer, I think people mentioned shirts that are a little bit low cut, um, but also your safety. So are there no parts and pieces people can um, tug on and tear and that kind of thing? Um, uh, just always uh, looking at what your school says is okay to wear. Uh, also be on time. Right. Um, so we want to be on time in the morning. We want to stay our full time in the afternoon, but that's also be on time to each class as the teachers are counting on you to be there. If something's not working in your schedule, like you're just having to stay five minutes later in a different class before you rush to across the hall, um, you're probably going to need to do some problem solving with whoever makes your schedule and talk to them about that. Um, we want to maintain that student-centered, supportive environment. So, um, you know, look for kids' emotional well-being, just like we checked in on each other this morning and said, how are you feeling today? Uh, we want to be there to be their advocate, to help them out, um, even when they're struggling. And struggling might look like a behavior that's really driving you nuts and um, really it's hard to deal with but they need your support in that moment. So how can we do that with dignity um, and show them some grace, but also maintain um, a good environment for all the other students? Um, we wanna establish positive relationships with staff members and students. So research shows us that if there is no significant relationship, there is no significant learning. 
So we need to um, become, um, you know, good supportive adults for our kids around us. They need to know that they can rely on us and trust us and um, feel like, hey, this is a person who's looking out for me and um, cares about me. We also want to use appropriate language, right? So I think, you know, about um, some old school ways of teaching and how they were pretty harsh, even in those um, moments of correcting behaviors and things like that. Um, so we always want to use a positive um, kind of language. Um, of course, no swearing. I think that's probably pretty obvious, but also, um, I, you know, I remember my students saying that a, a sub told them to shut up once. And of course, we would never use that language anymore with kids. You know, third graders like I taught think that that's swearing. So um, always maintain that really professional language. Um, we want to build and maintain effective communication with our teachers. I would say there's no such thing as over communication. Um, talk to them about the things that you're seeing in intervention groups you're working with, or if you're with kids on a bus or the playground, tell them what's going on. Um, sometimes the biggest challenge is just finding the time to do that. Um, we also want to exhibit good attendance. You are so needed in your schools, Paris. Um, I, you know, I know in my classroom, I relied on Paris so much that they need you there. And right now we have such a, su a subbing shortage that um, your good attendance is great. So keep yourself healthy and um, try to minimize those times that you have to leave school. Also, we want you to use time wisely. Look for things to do. Um, look to keep busy. Ask people if you can help them out. Um, again, stay off phones and things like that that might, um, you know, just not be the best use of your time at school. And then model teaching and behavior management of the teacher. So if the teacher's using certain words to teach a skill, that's something for you to use. If they teach it in a certain way, that's again, a, a great way for you to be teaching the kids and behavior management too. That keeps it less confusing for kids when it's really consistent from person to person. And we know that you are all such wonderful professionals that you'll remember that. But one thing I do want to remind you, remind you of too is to take care of yourself. Um, our job is uh, not an easy one, right? Being educators. And um, so take time to calm down, to do something quiet, do something that um, is fun. And just remind yourself every day of why you love your job and what brings you there. Sometimes um, focusing on that positive um, helps get you through it. And I want to invite you to each of our monthly Zooms uh, or bi-monthly Zooms, sorry, every other month. It's even months, first Tuesday at two. So we'll see you again in December where we'll talk about behavior supports um, those positive supports for kids. That's something that you all said that you wanted more of, just like you did. You said you wanted more of Google tools um, when we met this summer. So we're glad for your feedback and that's what we brought you. Um, so we'll also um, learn some Paris skills um, at the end of the day when we're talking about behavior supports. So we hope to see you on Zoom, but if you can't tune in live, we always record these and we record them here at the website listed. Um, bit.ly slash paras of ESU8. And that's where you can find the link to the Zooms. And that's where you can find all the recordings and um, the different resources that we've shared out through the years. So um, we just want to say thank you so much for joining us. Um, it's been a pleasure to see two of you in person. And um, hopefully, will um, many more of you will join in via Zoom or via the recording. Uh, our email addresses are here. So if you need anything, really, our job is to serve you. So let us know. We'd love to help you. Those are such great tips that you shared, Steph. It's a good reminder for everyone. And it's neat that the pairs get refreshers on just good life practices. So thanks for sharing all that you do. And thanks again for having me with tech. Thank you. Thanks, JC, for joining us. Um, any questions from participants before we head out? No, but I enjoyed the afternoon with you.
Well, we always enjoy seeing you guys too. So, hey, you guys take care and um, we'll see you in December. Okay, bye. Okay, bye-bye.